Hello everyone, uh, I would like to welcome you all to today's class. Uh, we will briefly look at what we did in the last class and then uh, proceed further with the remaining um, part of the lectures. What we did discuss was the uh, chemistry of vinyl silanes and we, uh, we saw that the vinyl silanes react more or less um, in a similar fashion like allyl silanes where the emphasis was on the uh, beta uh, carbocation stability. And uh, uh, we also looked at the um, retention of the uh, configuration of the double bond if uh, the uh, well defined uh, double bond is reacted with an electrophile such as here. So we have is MeCO uh, plus as the uh, uh, electrophile that one can expect to form and this then retains the same position as the carbon silicon bond. We also saw that in some cases the uh, beta silicon effect is uh, overridden and we saw an interesting example where there was a possibility of stabilization of the uh, beta carbocation as well as the tertiary uh, carbocation being there uh, and uh, that starts from uh, moving uh, a hydride shift. Then we also saw uh, the Nazaro cyclization. In the Nazaro cyclization, we saw how the uh, regiochemistry of cyclization is uh, basically dictated by the silicon group. So we, we saw various aspects of the vinyl silane chemistry and of course we uh, see that intramolecular cyclizations also uh, take place where the double bond uh, that holds uh, the silicon uh, actually allows the cyclization to take place on the same carbon as the uh, carbon that holds the silicon. So now we look at some other aspect of it which is called Peterson olefination although it is not directly CC bond forming reaction but it is uh, interesting silicon based chemistry. For example, if we start a molecule like this which is uh, beta salinol alpha and beta uh, and which is a 3 uh, configured compound and if we treat with potassium hydride then there is an elimination that uh, follows a syn path to lead to the formation of the E isomer. On the other hand if we treat this 3O molecule with a BF3 ethorate then it undergoes an anti-elimination uh, to form the Z isomer as the major product. So it is a highly stereospecific reaction, one under basic condition and the other under acidic or Lewis acidic condition. Now how does this reaction occur? So if we take uh, any beta silenol uh, group like this here in which we have uh, the O- to be formed upon treatment with a base then we can invoke the formation of a four membered intermediate of this kind where of course now silicon forms uh, silicon oxygen bond and therefore it is pentacoordinated which is also now known this kind of molecule is also known as 1,2 oxacylitinide. Then this can undergo a cleavage of the silicon carbon bond to make an anion of course there will be slight interaction with the carbon silicon bond in order for the stereo specificity to uh, retain and then this undergoes a cleavage of this kind where carbon carbon bond is formed and of course trimethyl silyl or trialkyl silyl oxide comes off. Alternatively with the same four membered intermediate can be uh, taken up and can be allowed to undergo a concerted uh, cleavage in this fashion to lead to the formation of the corresponding olefin. Now obviously this involves a 1-3 shift of the silyl group that means from here 1, 2, 3 the silyl group has shifted from 
1 to the third position. Now, how we can look at this particular 3O compound going to this E isomer uh, based on this kind of mechanism? We can take the starting 3O compound as an anion of this kind here. Now, if we uh, rotate the entire molecule in such a fashion out of the plane towards us in such a way that the carbon silicon and the carbon oxygen bonds which are going backside, they come into the plane. So if that happens, then the hydrogen which is here, which is coming towards us, now comes into the plane and the C3S7 which is in the plane goes backside. And similarly, the uh, C3S7 which was into the plane, now because we are rotating towards us in out of the plane, therefore it's coming towards us. And of course the hydrogen which is coming towards us now goes backside. So why we are doing it is basically to make sure that the carbon silicon and carbon oxygen bonds are in the plane to view properly that now it leads to the formation of a four member intermediate which then eventually breaks to form the corresponding double bond. Now if the double bond forms it between these two carbons then you can see that this hydrogen and this hydrogen are away from each other and this C3S7 and this C3S7 groups are also away from each other leading to the formation of the E isomer. So this is how the base uh, mediated reaction occurs. Now how does the Br3 etherate lead to the formation of Z isomer that now we need to understand. Now what is happening in this case is is uh, that we need an anti-elimination to take place. Now what is uh, happening here is when you have a stereochemistry of the uh, molecule written like this, then you have C3H7 here and uh, C3H7 here and uh, OH group which is now going to be uh, reacting with the Br3 and H and of course positive charge here and the negative charge on the boron and then of course you have a hydrogen here. Now in order for anti-elimination to take place as uh, you can expect that uh, if we uh, try and write it and rotate it in, in the similar fashion as we did it uh, in the previous case where you have here uh, R3SI going into the plane and then of course uh, we can expect the hydrogen to come this side here and C3S7 to go back side. Because now uh, if uh, we try and rotate uh, uh, this particular part of the molecule in this fashion here so that the OBF3 comes OH BF3 is now anti periplanar to the uh, carbon silicon bond, then what will happen is um, the uh, uh, C3S7 will go backside and of course hydrogen will come towards us up towards up. So if that happens then you have an anti elimination here and then that leads to the formation of the cis product or the Z product. So basically uh, we are talking about uh, the uh, elimination of the uh, anti way uh, so that the carbon silicon bond and the carbon oxygen bond which is um, uh, leaving from here should be anti to each other. So this is how the stereochemistry of the um, uh, Peterson olivination uh, under basic conditions and uh, similar type of elimination using uh, Lewis acid uh, give different types of stereochemistry of the double bond. So we take another example of uh, this very interesting uh, case which uh, uh, is uh, shown here which can uh, be looked at it in, in a very interesting uh, conformation fashion that we write the conformation in this way uh, that uh, the uh, silicon can be considered to be uh, present here 
And uh, then uh, to the right of the silicon is of course uh, OH group here. This is the OH group which is here. Now you can write OBN here. Then we write uh, the uh, OBN here. Then we write OH here and then we write OH here. This is the conformation of this particular molecule. This is how it would look like. So, uh, if uh, we consider that uh, we react it with uh, sulfuric acid, then of course, you have uh, the uh, proper orientation of the um, of the OH group and the silicon being antiperiplanar to each other and that leads to the uh, elimination of uh, this particular OH group and the silicon leading to the formation of say we write uh, in, in this fashion then we can say that we have a double bond here then OH group is here then of course OBN is here and then you have OBN group here and the OH group is here. So, uh, if uh, we uh, try and uh, look at this particular molecule and this molecule they are similar. So, this OH uh, this double bond is here, this double bond is here, this OH group is here, this is beta oriented, then OBN is alpha oriented, then this OBN is beta oriented and this OH is alpha oriented. This is how it is. Uh, now, if we try and look at the uh, other uh, aspect of it, then we can say that under basic conditions, uh, it undergoes syn elimination. So, uh, you can uh, expect that uh, these two, these two being uh, seen to each other uh, because one is axial, this one is axial, this is equatorial. So, they are seen to each other. So, the elimination would give this particular product. So, this is how the uh, eliminations are designed uh, in such a way that under acidic condition it gives uh, uh, elimination of uh, the uh, anti type whereas under basic conditions the elimination leads to syn type of elimination. Uh, if we look at uh, the, um, the uh, formation of uh, uh, alpha silyl carbonan. Uh, next to the silicon then of course, uh, we can expect that if we react uh, a substrate uh, of this kind here where there is an anion next to the silicon having a carbon atom there can react with the carbonyl group and it adds to the carbonyl group to form this um, uh, beta silanol and that undergoes uh, elimination in the same fashion as we discussed which is called Peterson olefination using uh, HF pyridine. So, HF pyridine is nothing but it is a source of H plus uh, and of course, uh, F minus uh, in the presence of a base like pyridine. So, uh, what does it do is, is protonates the oxygen here. So, protonation of the oxygen takes place here and a positive charge is generated here F minus picks up the proton from here uh, sorry a silicon from here and then elimination occurs in this fashion to form this particular product with a double bond being here. Now, uh, in a similar fashion if we take um, uh, the uh, anion uh, alpha to the silicon uh, in this substrate where the negative charge is next to the two sulfurs that can also add to this and, and can generate uh, after the uh, Peterson olefination uh, we can expect uh, to form a double bond of this kind. Now, this obviously as you can see that is happening because of the uh, formation of an intermediate of this kind here. You have an O minus and then you have here uh, silicon and of course, sulfur in this particular fashion and then you have elimination of this kind and that leads to the formation of the double bond. And this can be hydrolyzed in the presence of mercury chloride and trifluoroacetic acid where the first thing that happens is of course, uh, the uh, 
protonation of the double bond that uh, forms the um, intermediate of this kind where the protonation has happened uh, because the trifluoroacetic acid is used. So you have a lone pair of electron here that gives the protonation, the proton reacting with this and you generate positive charge here and of course CF3 CO2 minus. This of course then undergoes uh, hydrolysis in the presence of mercury chloride and water. So I suggest that uh, you write the uh, mechanism of this reaction and then we will discuss it in the uh, subsequent classes where we take question and answer. Basically what is happening is the water will attack it here. You can write down stepwise mechanism. Also it aids that the mercury chloride which is soft in nature reacts with the sulfur here also. So based on that the mechanism leads to the formation of the corresponding acid. So I would suggest that you uh, work out the mechanism which we will discuss it in our question and answer session. Now if you look at the stability of the carbon ions, uh, uh, we can uh, say that alpha silyl carbon ions of this kind are more stable than the uh, normal carbon ion here. Uh, that is what we have used in the formation of the, in the corresponding Peterson olefination type of products. Now uh, carbon ions with an alpha silicon group are more stable than the carbon analogs. Uh, silicon exerts a weak positive uh, inductive effect through the sigma framework. So if it is a, if it is induces electron density then uh, one would expect that it should be uh, destabilizing the carbon um, uh, silicon, uh, the anion at the carbon atom holding the silicon. But that is overridden for several different reasons and the positive inductive effect of the silicon uh, gets uh, nullified by several factors. One of the things is that the empty 3D or atomic orbital on silicon such as this here uh, allows uh, p pi d pi bonding with the filled sp3 um, atomic orbitals of the, on the carbon anion. So there is a nice overlap as you can see it here uh, which allows the, uh, the stabilization of the negative charge. Second is that there is an overlap between the filled sigma orbital, this is the filled, filled sigma orbital of the metal carbon bond and the unfilled uh, this particular uh, sigma star carbon silicon orbital uh, overlap allows uh, overlap here allows the stabilization of the negative charge. Plus in addition to that there is a uh, coefficients of the orbitals if you see there is a large coefficient on the silicon atom and that further allows the overlap uh, in a positive way. So these are the factors which allow the stabilization of a carbon ion onto the um, uh, carbon that holds the silicon or alpha silyl carbon ions are stabilized. We can um, add the uh, um, uh, vinyl uh, silanes of uh, this kind here uh, to um, the um, uh, various kinds of alpha beta answer systems uh, through a cuprate based chemistry. So we can have a conjugate addition of this type of uh, uh, copper based uh, reagents which allow the formation of the vinyl silane uh, with of course the uh, uh, one four addition to the enone. Now what is the use of it? The use of it is that if you um, um, uh, epoxidize this uh, vinyl silane we can get the corresponding vinyl uh, this uh, epoxy silanes. We discussed uh, epoxidation earlier of the allyl silane also. Now if we uh, pro allow the reaction of such epoxy silanes in the presence of uh, uh, protonated water then uh, one gets this, uh, this particular uh, diketone of this kind. So this is something that is very interesting. We will we'll look at the, the mechanism that allows the formation of this ketone. Now as you can see that the carbon that holds the silicon that is the carbon that gets the carbonyl group. This is something which is quite interesting. So what are the reactions of these uh, epoxy silanes? So if we start with this uh, simple 
substrate like this vinyl silane make the corresponding epoxy silane then in the presence of uh, acid when the water reacts uh, it could one possibility is that this opens up here and the water attacks um, to this position and forms the one two diol which again undergoes protonation here to form uh, something of this sort which then of course um, loses carbon silicon bond here with the nucleophile uh, like water or methanol whatever is present in the reaction medium attacking onto this uh, leading to eventually the formation of this enol like this. And this can then uh, uh, enolize uh, this enol can ketonize and form the corresponding ketone. So that is how the, the ketone comes onto the same carbon where like a silicon. This can also be written up in a slightly different way that is uh, we can start with uh, the uh, protonation directly uh, on the uh, epoxide oxygen and uh, one can think about the cleaving of the uh, carbon silicon bond like this. So you have a nucleophile or say water adds on to this and then of course we can directly uh, put it in this fashion that leads to the formation of uh, enol which is going to be like this. And uh, of course you will also get ME3SiOH. And this is the enol that leads to the formation of the corresponding ketone. This is also possible. And this has been discussed by, by Gilbert Stork in his paper in 1971. The uh, other reaction of the uh, epoxy silane is that you can react uh, this kind of epoxy silane with HBr. And uh, when HBr gets uh, uh, reacted with the epoxide, uh, it opens up to give uh, this uh, type of intermediate where the bromide has attacked onto this and protonated uh, epoxide opens up to form this intermediate. So this is attacking from the alpha side from the lower side and this goes to the beta side that is opposite side that is how the stereochemistry of this and this are opposite to each other. Now um, uh, if in order for the reaction to occur um, in a uh, anti fashion that is anti elimination to take place under acidic conditions what you need is is the carbon oxygen bond here and the carbon silicon bond to be anti to each other. So what you need to do is to rotate it in this fashion here and once you rotate it you will get the uh, let the OH be as it is as it is. Now the carbon silicon bond which is pointing upward is rotated in such a fashion it goes into the plane below. In that situation then the bromine goes up uh, backside and the hydrogen comes towards us. Now if the anti elimination takes place by the protonation of the OH group here and then of course you have an anti elimination of the carbon silicon bond and then we see that we have the hydrogen which is going backside this hydrogen is coming towards us side and therefore an E olefin is formed. And now this reaction occurs in this fashion that first the bromine uh, reacts with it <coughs> with the silicon uh, forming this kind of pentavalent uh, silicate and then there is a transfer of the uh, silicon bromine uh, bond gets transferred to the carbon uh, bromine bond and then we get the uh, uh, product Summit somewhat like this and that leads to the formation of the epoxide uh, this uh, double bond. Now likewise if we start with the uh, stereochemistry of the silicon being opposed different from what it is here then of course we will get the corresponding Z olefin. So uh, we would uh, like to stop it at this stage um, uh, and uh, see uh, what we can do in the next class. Uh, Till then take care uh, and go through the class note that I have discussed and we will uh, take up the question answer uh, so when there is a session dealing with the question answer is there and then we can clarify the doubts uh, that, that you may have.
Thank you and take care.